Good morning, everybody. This is Michael with Fast Fast. Today's Friday, uh, August 27th. We are at our uh, Harmon install today. Um, Fantasy Brown, we've got a large island and then we've got a perimeter with a cooktop. So far, we've been blessed with super nice customers. Uh, if they were all like this, we would be in business. Um, but uh, it should be a pretty straightforward install. As you can see, we cover the floor as we always do. And my guys are out there setting up our ramp for the no lift system. And then uh, we've got a big top. I've got all three of my guys with me that are here today. So I will let one of them film us bringing the big top in and uh, let you guys see how that works. And I will just update you throughout the process. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you here in a minute. So uh, with this job, we've got a cooktop. So we've got to finish the cutout. We never fully cut out cooktop at the shop because they will break when we're getting them in the house and set them on the cabinet. Braxton and Bragg sells these cooktop bags here. So it's, it's a real simple concept. Um, it's basically a plastic bag. It goes inside your cabinet. And what you do is you just put it inside the cabinet and then you take you some blue tape and you tape it along the edges. Now, what we do is we basically, uh, we cut all the four corners out of the cooktop area and then we score it about halfway through um, front, back, and sides in the middle of each of those areas so that you cut the minimum amount of stone in the customer's house because you want to keep keep down what you cut in the customer's home. Um, but when you do that, dust gets in the cabinets. And when you got the slide for the drawers and things like that, you don't want that dust getting in there because then the slides won't work like they're supposed to. So to uh, eliminate that problem, somebody invented these bags so that you don't just have to get plastic and try to modify them yourself into some type of bag. And uh, it just goes in, you cut, you have one of your guys hold the back in for you. They'll catch, you know, as much of the dust as possible with the vacuum. But uh, this bag right here, instead of letting it just fall inside the cabinet, it, uh, it catches a lot of it. They work very well. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. I mean, yeah, it's an extra cost on the install. But let me tell you, the cost to buy a bundle of these bags is a lot cheaper than buying new slides for cabinets or paying a cleaning crew to come out and clean up your mess inside the cabinet. Um, so I recommend anybody that has not tried these cooktop bags to uh, give Braxton and Bragg a call, get them to send you some of these bags. Braxton and Bragg is pretty good about shipping your orders in one day. Um, they're other than Amazon, Braxton and Bragg is about the best as far as shipment times. Anybody that fishes, if you order stuff from Tackle Warehouse, you know you're going to be waiting about a month for your stuff. So, uh, anyway, if they were to get a shot of this down inside of here, you know, just take your time, tape it up best you can, and uh, it'll eliminate a lot of problems for you. So we've got the laser level set. Uh, the cabinets look pretty good, not too bad. Um, it looks like this side over here drops down about a quarter inch from this side over here. You guys feel me? You take the tape and you put it right here on top. Uh, so it looks like we're about five sixteenths. It drops about five sixteen, so not the end of the world. We will make it happen. 
And then, even though it, it doesn't have to be seen to anything, I like to see how the island sets up with the rest of the uh, cabinets. Now, most of the time what you'll run into in the customer's house is they'll get this island wrong. It'll be higher or lower than the perimeter. Where in this house, they've got it pretty much dead on. It looks really good. Um, you know, um, in my opinion, it just looks better if they get it dead on like this. Uh, most people don't notice it, but if you work with countertops and cabinets, you will notice it. But it uh, looks like they did a very good job on this one. So, all right. All right, guys. What, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, we've got this wall with all these angles on it, uh, all these 22 and a half degree angles or 45s or whatever they are. Um, so I went ahead and cut the bottom all the way around just in case I needed to cut some out of the top. And I've checked my template and I'll show you that. You always want to bring your templates to the job site with you no matter what. I, I worked with a guy at Aspen many years ago. He never would bring templates. And I'm like, dude, how can you do your job without your templates? All right. So the template shows you what your top's going to look like, okay? Without this template, you don't know without using a 100, 200 pound top. So if you look, the template tells me it's going to fit in there perfect, okay? It looks like I got about an eighth of an inch, all right? But your walls can change going up with one that's to be out. And you got to realize the template material is only an eighth inch thick and your stone's an inch and three sixteenths thick. So if the plumb is off a little bit, it could squeeze that top in some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and score this top area here. I'm not going to score it all the way out to where it shows in the front. But I'm going to score it back. It's all going to be hidden once we put the top in, and we can run a bit of painter's caulk on it. But it will give us just a little bit more play in there if we need it. Better to go ahead and score this wall like this than to take a chance on bumping this thing that we've spent, you know, 20, 30 minutes on each side of it, um, back cutting the bottom and then running the seam phantom on it so we can have a perfect seam. Um, so... I'm going to let David just kind of record me doing this. Um, hopefully everybody out there is carrying a razor knife on their side. Um, a multi-tool is, in my opinion, is a must-have when you're installing granite countertops. You're all the time having to cut pins, cut drywall, cut something, and this just makes it a whole lot faster. A razor knife will work, but it's a little bit slower of a process. Nobody's saying you have to go out and buy a, a Rockwell or a DeWalt multi-tool. Um, Ingersoll Ran makes a corded version, and I think you can get it Lowe's for like 50 bucks tops. Um, and that'll work for you just fine. The blades are kind of pricey, but if you take care of them and you're only cutting drywall and wood, they'll last you quite a long time. If you hit a nail or something, just, uh, you know, stop what you're doing, get you a uh, chisel, a hammer, or something like that. See, we got a nail right here. So I'm gonna have to get something and pull it out. Um, or take my uh, chisel and knock it in. Um, it's kind of back in there and we're not trying to get way back into the wall, but uh, you will run into nails. Like I was cutting over here and I hit a nail don't try to cut through it. it. It will ruin your blade. Some of those blades can be 30 or 40 bucks. So just uh, just be smart with your tools and take care of them. And uh, that's it, guys. I'm going to have to get me a hammer. I'm going to knock that in. We're going to try to set this top into place. Um, I actually uh, may uh, let one of the guys record us putting this top in so you can kind of see the process. You always want to watch your seam. So these little claws here, they're, they're for pulling out nails. I might be able to get it in here and pull it out. Yep. And just 
pulls it right out. Now it's out of your way. So now we're going to try to slide this top in here uh, without bumping the sink. You got your sink right here. And as you can see, it's back cut with the seam fan. The edge is it's about as sharp as it'll cut you. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time on our sinks, lining them up on the uh, slabs, running the seam fan from the bottom. They are one of the most important parts of the job. So you want to make sure you're taking very good care of them. the seam like it's your girlfriend. You don't want it to get injured, you don't want it to get any scratches or bruises on it, and you want it to be pretty. I don't know if you guys can see um, with the camera. But anytime we have a sinkhole or we have a cooktop, we always put a fiberglass rod in the front and the back. The book says it makes it 300% stronger. I don't have no way to measure that, but I do know that we rarely have any problems with them when we put those rods in there. All right, let's pull our pin. Let's make sure we're using the, uh, first off, let's get this off here. Now let's pull a pin. Let's use our uh, cart. All right, so I had my little clip on there. <laughs> All right, guys. Here's where you want to be super careful. Um, and these guys will tell you, I don't know how many times the word finesse comes out of my mouth, but it does a lot. Um, you want to make sure you have an aluminum rod here. That's protection. It keeps the material from flexing and breaking or anything like that. We try to keep as much stability in the cooktop as we can, like I was talking about earlier, cutting the corners and leaving the middle. So we're going to try to lower it down and get it as close to level with these uh, cabinets as we can. When we're pushing, we got to stay together. I mean. I, I've explained it like dancing together. Um, you, everybody's got to be on the same page. If John pushes the heck out of his, he's going to chip this seam all to pieces. If I push the crap out of mine, I'm going to chip the front of the seam all to pieces. So it's finesse. You take your time. You gently push it in there, and you do not mess it up. If you touch anything, you touch the drywall on that side. Bring the card up. All right, stop. All right, now we're just going to a little bit at a time. Easy, easy. We're looking good. Easy, easy. Keep going. I'm on a. I'm going to have to raise her up some. No problem. These no lift carts are worth their weight in gold, guys. A little bit. A little bit of both. All right. If you don't have one, I suggest you. Uh, invest the eight thousand dollars and get you one. Uh, they may have went down now. I don't know. Uh, but with that, you get two aluminum rod suction cups, the ramp, extra batteries, uh, all kinds of stuff. All right, now that we got on the cabinet, we're gonna go ahead and lower it down to where both sides are touching. You want to make sure to keep your cart off of the cabinet. That way, you don't scratch it. All right, so now I think I'm on the cabinets. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna gently work this thing back. A little bit, take yours a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Keep going, a little bit more. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. All right, we're looking good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my card out of here. Pull the cart back in here. All right, stop right there. Sit down. All right, pull your pin. Now we're going to continue to work her back just a little bit at a time.
pack. Alright. Let me catch up. Alright, we should be good. Now let's go together. More. Alright, you're in. Yeah. Awesome. Freaking awesome. Good job, man. Awesome. Great job, guys. All right, guys, I want to show you something on this thing. Um, Fantasy Brown is a stone that is very, very hard to line up on the uh, slab on the saw. What you get at a lot of shops, um, they're more worried about making the most money they possibly can out of a job and saving the most out of a slab that they possibly can on a job. Don't get me wrong, profit's not a bad word. It's okay to make profit but it's not okay to make extra profit and sacrifice the customer's job. It, it's just not right. I've worked for companies where they would take this area right here and they would put a seam in every one of the corners. Okay, so they make this three pieces instead of the two that I've made it. And what they can do is they can just line this up in a corner and maybe use a quarter of a slab, okay? I had to cut into two different slabs. I had to have a brother, sister. I had to cut this one. Then I had to find where this one started on the other slab and cut it so I have a perfect seam. Now I have remnants and I may have to set on it a year before I sell the remnants and it'll be at a cheaper price. But so what? I only make $800 profit instead of the $2,500 somebody else has made. I can sleep at night knowing that I did what was right and what was fair. So if you look at this seam right here, you see the dark right here that goes all the way across. You see the light right there, it goes all the way across. You've got the same pattern right there. You got the same pattern there, 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 and there. It's so important to have that. When you put this seam together, you want it to look as close to being one piece as you can possibly get it. You definitely don't want to have lines going this way and then other lines going this way. It just don't look good. So, anyway, not to get on a preaching thing to you, but that's just the way I feel about it. Um, this one turned out real nice, so we're going to get this big island in now, guys. All right, guys, since I need all four of my, all four of us to lower this top down, what I'm going to do is just try to set this camera on one of the counters so you guys can just see us lower it. And uh, that's what we'll do. Alrighty, guys. So I got you kind of set up on the cabinet, and uh, we're gonna try to lower this thing. So cross your fingers, and hopefully everything will work out beautiful. All right, guys. Um, my speech, just like I give on everything we do. Um, we're gonna raise her up. Of course, gravity's gonna do a lot of the work for us. Um, we are going to put pressure on the back side and I'm going to try to get it as perfect as I can level. We want to make sure we don't raise it up and hit these and break these. We want to make sure we're not too super high when we go it flips over and messes up the top or anything. We're just going to take our time, finesse, put pressure on the back and lower it down there and it's going to be perfect. Any questions? Leave this on until we get flipped. I'm pull that off right now. Um, I want to take uh, this side here down and uh, pull that one off too. I'll hold y'all talking about that thing's cool as ass. Yeah, now. I can do it with that Alright, I would like to back the cart up. Don't pull the top because it'll fall. Uh, back it up that way so we don't hit the cat up. I want to go over. Alright, stop. That's plenty good. Right. I would expect to be. Alright, yeah. I'm gonna raise her up, guys. Pull that piece of tape off of that inside of it. Mm -hmm. Alright, with the three of us, you back there, me on the side. Um, you should be able to handle this pretty good, guys. Alright, I'm gonna pull. I'm going to pull a pin, guys. Uh -huh. Let's ease her over. Put pressure on the back and be careful. Just keep pressure on it. Don't raise up. Just keep pressure on it. Fall down. Easy, easy. Oh, 
look real nice just a little bit floating on this side so we put some shims in it I'm gonna go ahead and square it up like it's supposed to be so that they can caulk it out while I'm putting this seam together over here we'll put the seam together the guys will go ahead and bring in a blade and, a, and uh, the fan and all that and the stuff to catch the cooktop when we bring it out and uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep working and get this job knocked out and get out of the customers hair Alright guys, so what we did is leveled everything up and uh, got the seams nice and level. I will need to get a razor blade. Um, David, uh, thank you. David mixed my uh, epoxy for me. Um, I do use knife grade. I've heard people on here talk smack about knife grade, but let me tell you, I put my seams against yours any day of the week. Um, this people on all slab fabric. But I think they just like they're little trolls. They like to talk trash about everything. But, uh, anyways, I use this K-Bond Elite. It's very, very good. It's my favorite. Um, it's a. Uh, it's kind of a. It's supposed to be transparent, but it's kind of a white, grayish, off-white kind of. Kind of like a shadow port style color. Um, so. I checked and I made sure that my Gorilla Grips would fit because I've got my cooktop cut out here. And as you can see, it will fit on that side. Guys, I'm going to need an extension cord right into this Gorilla Grip. Uh, you always want to make sure you have everything you need set up before you put the hardener to this epoxy. You want to make sure you have an extension cord to your Gorilla Grips and you want to make sure where you're plugging that extension cord up at you've got juice because nothing sucks worse than to put hardener in your epoxy. Pull that seam together, go to put your Gorilla Grip on, plug it in, you ain't got no power. And then you're scrambling to try to find stuff before that epoxy sets up. And nine times out of ten in that situation it's going to set up on you and you're going to have to redo and reclean everything. Uh, you ready? You can just leave it. Down like that. I'll get it in a second. So we know we got power. We know we're good to go on that. Um, we got a razor blade here. We got a razor blade here. Um, David has set me out some a hardener here. So I'm gonna take some hardener. And I'm gonna start mixing it into the epoxy. And I've pulled my tops to get apart far enough to where I can get this uh, shim down in here. Now you can use a metal putty knife. I've got some laying around. Unless you're using white quartz to work on it, you cannot use a metal putty knife on white quartz. It'll leave black marks, and your seam will look like a uh, shrimp vein. It will not look good. Um, so I've got to where I just use a shim on everything because I don't have to worry about any metal marks that way. With this, we went with kind of a transparent gray color. It's summer. It's like 95 degrees outside. Um, we've had the door open while we're carrying our stone and stuff in, so it's a little hot in the house. So this epoxy is going to set up pretty fast, so you don't want to just overload it with hardener. So I got it mixed pretty good. So now I'm going to start shoving it down in this uh, seam here. Um, and I want to make sure I get it all the way through, because if you remember earlier, you seen that we back cut it. Well, that back cut's where it's rough. The epoxy will stick to the rough back cut stuff better than it will stick to the uh, 
upper eight three sixteenths of an inch that those pads on the seam fan was ran on. It's just just how things go. If it's rough, if it's a rough area, you know, the epoxy's gonna stick to it better. So I keep shoving and shoving and shoving it in there so I got plenty. That way when I squeeze it together, it'll come out the top and the bottom and I'll get the tightest seam possible. And you know, you want once these seams go together, you don't want them to ever come apart on you again. All right, so we got that together. I'm just going to uh, pull this out a little bit, which is make my uh, fronts line up and go together. I'm gonna run my shim down to get the excess uh, epoxy off. As you can see, I've got a really nice tight seam there. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in our Gorilla Grip so you ain't going to be able to hear me. I'm going to have to speak up a little bit. Plug that in. We need a spray bottle of alcohol, guys. You want to open these up as far as you can. Make sure those are uh, rolled back. Your can. And spray this so you get a good uh, suction. Put it on the front here. Suction. John's went ahead and sprayed this other one for me, so I'm going to go ahead and roll it back. I'm going to roll these back here. You want to make sure you line it up the same way. Touch or shim anything over here while your seams 
drying up. It's very important to leave this area alone and let it set. There's no need to spend a lot of time mixing epoxy, leveling it up, putting a Gorilla Grip, and then you turn around and go over here and put a shim in and throw everything off. So just, just be smart. A lot of the install is just common sense, guys. Just be smart. Now we'll skim this. David's got us a batch. We always make extra in case we run across any chips or anything like that. And what we'll do, the next batch, we'll add a little bit more of the gray pigment and make us a little bit darker. When we scrape this, we'll get little bitty microscopic holes, sometimes little bigger holes. And that darker color will fill those holes and it'll camouflage that. And then we can go behind with the marker as well, camouflage it even more. That's it on the scene, guys. Uh, here in a second, it'll dry, and I'll show you just kind of how I scraped it. And we'll just kind of show you the finished product and all that. I keep touching it to check how dry it is, and it's, it's pretty good right now. Um, I'm going to kind of show you. You can take your alcohol bottle. I always spray my epoxy with alcohol. It softens it up before I cut it. Make sure you don't get any of that alcohol on the camera. Pigment. 
So you can see it's a lot different. I'm going to add just a touch more of gray and I'm going to put this hardener here in it. fill in any little holes and it's going to kind of give us like a camouflage look. Mm -hmm. We'll take a razor blade and put that on just to smooth um, it. What did you do for That's trash. You want to throw it in the trash bucket? You want to take it real. real. And if you notice any little pits or holes or anything like that in it. Now's the time to just go ahead and fill that stuff in as well. Yeah. I'll normally cover a lot of stuff, so I don't know if it's too much. Um, unless it, I know Kyle's not going to cover, but anything right against the wall, Kyle will cover. Right. So now we just let that dry, and we'll go ahead and drop our cooktop um, while we're doing that. Um, we got the fan in here, guys. Uh, we don't put that on yet. We'll go ahead and score to cut through the back and the front. We got the blade and all that stuff in here. We took the cooktop out now. I just cut the back before I remember the film. We cut the front. Then we put a bar and stuff on there and then we drop the side. You can see we got David holding the back end. You can't as much as the front end. We already put the bag under there. And we got a plane running there also, check it out. Now that we have cut the front and the back all the way through, always cut it first because it's most likely to break with pressure, so now I don't have to worry about any pressure on it. I'm going to adjust this to where I'm as close to the front and the back and as far away from the side so that my blade doesn't get jammed up. I'm going to open this up a bit. Alright. You always want to make sure that you grab the part that's going to be falling. Don't clamp on the other part. I've seen it done before. It doesn't work out. I've done it myself before. So now when we cut these sides, it won't just fall through. These will grab it when we pick it up and take it outside and get it out of the way. Alright, we'll start on this side, David. grabs on and continues to hold this on here for you. So just make sure you don't end up breaking your top after you've done everything right and just you have a little piece of mesh holding on here. So now you just kind of want to grab it. Pick it up. Hand it to Tony. And he'll take it outside to the truck and not drop it on the customer floor or anything. 
Well, we still got the corners we've got to finish cleaning out. Yeah. So David will continue to uh, David will continue to hold the vacuum, and I'm just going to clean these corners. This particular cooktop's got a about an inch of glass all the way around, so we've got a lot of free space, but we don't want to cut just a huge hole where it flops around. Okay, guys, what just happened? Um, I think John did it. First time we used the bag as well. You cannot stick your vacuum on the bag. It'll rip it out, and then there's no point in even having it in there. So what you got to do in this circumstance is just stop what you're doing and retape your bag. So this is a good uh, trainable moment for anybody watching. All right, when you're cutting your cooktop and you're using a cooktop bag, you just want to hold this vacuum, whichever corner you're cutting, you just kind of want to hold this vacuum like this, so that you catch it and you don't grab the bag. Okay, so we got a Vacuum caught most of it, and I don't know if John's pretty tall. Can you see the bag in there? Yes, sir. So if you see the bag, it's caught all the dust that fell down in there. Now, if you'll watch, I'm just going to pull the bag off, and you'll see up under it how clean the cabinets are. Get a little bit of excess on the top, but. As compared to not using anything, I think it's pretty daggone good. Uh, Alright guys, yeah, so uh, now we've just got to uh, polish the front of this thing. I've got to shim that sink up and caulk it out. Caulk out all the fronts, drill the hole, and then um, Caulk everything, clean, seal, make it pretty, and we're getting really close now, so we will start recording in here in a minute. It's recording. All right, we got David over polishing the front of the thing, and I'm going to drill the faucet and the uh, push button, uh, and uh, John will run the vacuum while I drill. Um, I think David's got the water over there, so I will borrow some of his water to fill my holes. Alright, we've got a second one right here. I know we lost the lid on a couple, or the sprayer on a couple. So we're just going to turn the vacuum off, plus David's polishing. It doesn't make a lot of dust, plus I'll use water. But pay attention is when I drill these faucet holes, I always start at an angle. Last thing you want to do is skip your faucet hole bit across a, a daggone slab size island and mess it up after you spend all this time at install. Oh, my God. 
we just took it off and we just water. And uh, just peek from I'm sure you can see the lights flickering on the camera there. The I don't have one. Is. So this is what I meant guys by a lot of hoses and stuff in the bottom. You have your hot and your cold and a lot of people use a, uh, a pull out so we don't have the sprayer here. And uh, a lot of times this will have a weight connected to it. It allows that sprayer to pull back up in there. It's probably in the box over there. Um, but we don't we don't worry about any of that. We just make sure that it fits. Like I said, seam is one of your most important uh, 
parts of a job. You try to get your seam as smooth as possible. Sometimes you have little crowns in the stone and things like that. And then you can feel the seam even if you've done everything right. You put it together and you can feel it a little bit. Well, it's it passes for industry standard, but it don't pass for countertop king standard. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a top polish on this seam. We have hard turbo pads. We'll go through several of them, and then we'll switch over and do a couple soft pads. This fantasy brown stone is very soft, so you don't have to be too hard on it, and you don't have to go too deep. So what we want to do, I've put all these white lines on it. What that does, it's going to show me where I've polished at. Each area you polish, the next pad you want to go just a little bit further out so that it feathers it and you don't have any dull spots, I guess. Um, so, uh, as long as you take your time and you use plenty of water and you do it correctly, you don't have any problems. Where it comes into a problem is people rush it and they don't take their time. They don't draw lines and then it just don't look good. Um, but it can, it can make a good job into a great job. It's, you'll see when I'm done. I don't know, I know John's never seen the top polish the same. Uh, have you seen the top polish one time? Yes, several times. Okay, so Tony's seen it, I know David's seen it. Uh, it, it makes a world of difference when you do it, Tommy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I've actually did it before. David, yeah, David has done it. Um, David, David's done quite a bit on one job. <laughs> He's become a pro overnight at that job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what I'm doing with the tape is that's just a barrier for the water, guys. Uh, keeps the water from slinging all over everything, all right? And it also helps keep the area wet for my pads. So you can use a regular grinder on this stuff. Um, I actually bought this uh, large grinder here. It doesn't heat up as bad and it'll last longer. Sometimes I'll use my small one on my regular pads and I'll use this large one when I get to like the buff pad. So I'm starting with a 100, and I'm going to start directly on the seam line. And can you see the seam real good from there, David? You can feel it right here, guys. Just right there. Here it's good, here it's good, but you can feel it right there, and that's just a crown in the stone. So we're going to take care of that. smooth here and each pad I use I'm gonna go out a little further and it's gonna make it a little smoother so now that I'm done with this one I'm gonna throw it in here and now I'm gonna to go to my number two hopefully it won't jump around on this bad I think there was a pop here on that one. I'm not gonna get it nice and moist and now I'm going to go up to this line here and just make sure I get it real good to there with the two. Second pad there. We are about to perfection with it. Okay. 
Okay, that was our two. Now we're going to go with our five. When it goes up, does it make a smoother thing? Yep, it's like painting a car or something, painting wood, anything. Now we're going with our number five, and it should go smooth too, and not jerk me around. Lord, I hope. Yep. All right, guys, we had a battery issue, so I think I got enough to finish the job out. Um, I'll have to recharge my batteries at home. So I'm just making sure that I got my sound looking good. And I'm pretty even all the way through, I think. I'll hit it one more time with this uh, number five pass. And then we'll go to our number one. <laughs> or our 1,000. Second pass through with my 500. I'm going to wipe that down. And we're going to go on to the 1000, which is here. Lay it down over there again. 